Well, Nick, thanks for coming to the Harkin UK stand at the Dinghy Show. You've been a long standing ambassador of Harkin UK. It's great to have you on board. Um, quick question and answer session, if that's okay with you? Yeah, of course, yeah. Cool. So, to get things going, who taught you to sail and what inspired you to get into sailing? Uh, well, it was my dad, really. Um, he, uh, he had an end down at um, French and Pond. Okay. Uh, he took me out in that for the kind of first, first sails. Uh, and then I got into the cadet fleet at Frenchy, which, um, which is fantastic and, and still is. They get really big turnouts, lots of organised training. Uh, and then I, I kind of caught the bug. Um, must admit, the first six months of it, I, I kind of didn't like it. I, yeah. I preferred playing football. Uh, didn't like, just didn't get what was going on and thought, why am I doing this? But then after about six months, I, I kind of got to understand a bit of it and then just got addicted to it and, and kept going from there. So I uh, got on cadet circuit, did lots of events and, and um, yeah, that got, well got me hooked. Yeah, yeah, got me hooked. So when did you actually start using Harkin first on your boats? Uh, yeah, I've used Harkin for, for a long time. Um, I've always just felt it's the, the most robust and, and, and reliable kit. Um, so uh, yeah, I guess probably 20 years or so, yeah. showing my age, so uh, yeah, <laughs> a while. <laughs> so. Obviously, you've done a lot of sailing. What's been your toughest sailing experience, and what did it teach you? Mm. Uh, yeah, definitely the, the toughest experience I've had was fin sailing. Yep. Um, I think uh, you know just both physically and the, and the standard. Uh, I think sailing in an Olympic fleet and, and sailing against guys who are better, more talented, um, come through from a very young age, sailing a lot. And just since then, you know, all those guys sell every day. So as an amateur, that was really hard. Uh, and, I, and I think it, um, it just taught me there was another level on starting, yep. um, another level on approach and focus, <laughs> and probably another three levels on fitness. Um, so it just brought home all those things and made me raise my game in those areas, which, which helped my amateur sailing a lot. So I think that was a, yeah, it was, a, it was tough, but a really, really good experience. Good lesson. Yeah. Good lesson. Obviously that's taught you a lot of things, which has been shown in your results, which have been so consistent, mm. which is what is key for you. What's the secret to getting those consistent results all the time? Um, well, I guess it's, it's no great secret. It's just a, a lot of time on the water. Um, and, I, and I think quality time as well. So, so when I'm out uh, sailing or even a lot of the time racing, I'm always trying new things, trying to learn something new, trying to get something out of that out of that day and move things on make it worth um, and then I think when I'm racing I'm always just uh, looking to sail in the biggest and best fleets possible because that's how you learn is through sailing against people better than yourself who make making mistakes so, so always looking just for the best quality of time as well as well as quantity when I can yeah so I'm seeing those big fl big fleets that you're racing in have you got any pre-race rituals that you go through each each mm. time uh, I try not to have any sort of rituals as such because I think if you have a superstition or that kind of thing there's a danger if you can't do it you, you're then blowing your day um, but certainly have a, a set of processes I'll go through um, so I always like to certainly at the big events I'm not always organised enough at the smaller ones but the big events I'll try and get out early uh, gather lots of information and then I'll have a series of processes that I go through at certain times I'll be onto transits and, and start line bias and, and then a, yeah a kind of a, a set of processes all the way through to the start and, and after the start you know, flexible on them depending on the conditions, but certainly have a, a set of things I know I'm going to want to go through before um, before I start that race. Yeah. Cool. So you've been an ambassador of ours for a fair few years now. What products could you recommend in the Harker range to keep the boats performing as they should do, and keep you at the front of the fleet? Yeah, I mean, uh, I must admit, boat maintenance uh, isn't isn't my strength. Um, so my, my main products are a good crew and a good boat builder to, to, <laughs> to help keep me on the water. But uh, I think a bit of it, you know, with a Harkin kit, is it's, it's so well made, you don't have to change things much, which is, which is what I like. You know, I, I'm not a boat maintenance fan, so That's um, reliable. I, like, I like having a yeah, reliable kit. And then, you know, Pro Loop's always just, just good to keep, keep, things, keep things running, you know, a bit of silicon spray. Um, but uh, yeah, you're probably asking the wrong man for, for detailed boat maintenance. <laughs> I'll go and find the crew then. <laughs> yeah. 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 So for 2014, what's your key goals for this year? What's uh, your key aims? Yeah, key boats. Um, I've mainly, most of my time been uh, D1 and a Merlin. Um, we, uh, we we just about won those last year, and I think actually defending a title is a lot harder than winning it first time. Um, so uh, so there'll be really good challenges. Um, and then back in the 400, it's yep. the uh, 
20th year nationals at Mount Spain, so fantastic venue for the sailing and for the family. So um, looking forward to all of those. Been there for that as well. Yeah, good. Yeah, obviously you've done a lot of high profile sailing, very serious stuff. But what's the funniest moment that you've had in your sailing career? Uh, yeah, probably. Well, funniest for me was um, I just met my now wife, and uh, we we're doing an, an open at Timon, and um, it was quite windy with an offshore wind, and she was kind of sceptical about whether we wanted to go out so we just launched and then this massive gust came down and a squall came down we we're still under the cliffs it was offshore and uh, I held the boat while she took the trolley because she was quite nervous and I could barely hold the boat it was it was that windy but I wasn't letting on I was just holding it and she said are you sure this is all right and I think it's, it's absolutely fine and then um, we got out and we just cleared the cliff and the wind came down with another gust and there was this bang and we just wiped out I know we'd actually sheared the centreboard off, bent the mast, and uh, um, sheared the rudder as well, all in all in one gust. So Good effort. she had to be lifted off with a rescue boat, and I hung on the bottom of the boat. So it was pretty funny with hindsight, and I realised then that she she was had a good sense of humour. She didn't hate me for it. So just a key. So for all of the young up and coming racing stars of the future, what tips or advice would you give them? Uh, I think um, just go out and. Do, do as much sailing as you can in as big fleets as you can. Uh, I think go and get as much variety of experience as you can. You know, try not to stick to one boat. I certainly feel every time I sail in a different boat, I learn something new, um, different types of sailing. I did a few years of team racing, and that's been hugely valuable from a from a fleet racing as well. Yeah. Uh, and I think most importantly, just just go out and have fun. Just uh, enjoy it. Go with, go with what boats you like. Go and enjoy it. Enjoy it. And then you you, you keep doing it. Yeah. Great. Great. Well, thank you for coming to the Harkin Stand at the Dinghy Show. It's been great to have a few questions. Not at all. See you on the water in 2014. Cheers.